Hello everybody, we are going to talk about the bones of the cat. Particularly, we will focus on the pelvic girdle and the associated hind limbs. The pelvic girdle and the associated hind limbs of the cat has several bones. This bone right here is also known as the os coxae or the innominate bone. This one would be the femur. This is the tibia and the smaller one is the fibula. And this whole foot here is a pes. This would be the innominate bone of your cat, also known as the pelvis or the hip bones. The pelvic girdle or the os coxae of your cat is paired. One is just the os coxa, but both of them would be os coxae. How do you orient this bone? This would be the dorsal part, then this would be the ventral part, this is the anterior part, and that is the posterior part. One os coxa is a fusion of four types of bones, which would be the ilium, the ischium, the pubis, and the acetabular bone. This region here is the ilium, this one at the back is the ischium, and this one right here is the pubis. And then the thin bone right there at the center, that is the acetabular bone. There is really no clear demarcation where it sort of ends. But we do know that these four bones kind of meet together at this deep roundish cavity here, which is known as the acetabulum. Part of the ilium forms this part, part of the ischium forms this part, part of the pubis this part, and the acetabular bone, which is a thin bone somewhere right here, which is also that one, at the back, the whole thing will form your acetabulum. And of course the acetabulum, it kind of has that kind of notch here, which is known as the acetabular notch, which is somehow obscured a little bit by connective tissue. Those are the four fused bones that make up the entire os coxa. This big asshole is known as the obturator foramen. It is formed by the fusion of your pubis and your ischium. This bone right here, which is the most dorsal of the four bones, is known as the ilium. This part at the top is the iliac crest. This region here is the wing of your ilium. And this region here is the body of the ilium. This prominence here is also known as the tuber sacrale. And this prominence here is the tuber coxae. On the medial side of your ilium, that is the part that articulates with the sacrum of the vertebrae, and this is known as the auricular impression. And you'll also notice that it forms very prominent ridge tear or crest that is known as the spine. You'll also notice along this side, kind of the prominence right here, that is known as the iliopectineal eminence. And then if we move further down here, this is the iliopectineal line. But it's no longer part of the ilium, kind of part of the pubis already. The pubis is this part of your pelvis or the os coxa. This is the body of the pubis. This is the ramus of the pubis. The two rami of the pubis, they will meet again at this point. That is known as the pubic symphysis. The pubis kind of has this bump right here, the very tip of that is known as the pubic tubercle or the pubic crest. Ventrally, this area right here, up until here, that is the ischium, ischial spine, ischial tuberosity. Body of the ischium, ramus of the ischium, they kind of meet together at this area, which is known as the ischiatic symphysis. Along the border of your ilium and ischium, you'll find these depressions as well. This is the greater ischiatic notch, and this is the lesser ischiatic notch. The acetabulum is the point of articulation with the next bone that we will discuss, which is the femur. Boop! Beautiful ball and socket joint right there, giving that nice wide range of motion because of the way that this joint is. Let's move on to the femur. How do we orient the femur? This is the proximal end, and this is the distal end. This is the shaft. Right now you are looking at the bone from the anterior view, and this is the posterior view. Where this round head is, that is the more medial side, because you know that that is the one that articulates with the acetabulum. Therefore, you know that this is the left 
femur. Let's start with the most proximal part of your femur. This very beautiful round thing is known as the head. And in the head you will find some sort of depression, which is known as the fovea capitis. This part is also known as the neck. This bump here is the greater trochanter, and posteriorly, this bump here is the lesser trochanter. The space that they form is known as the trochanteric fossa. And this kind of line here, or this crest, is known as the intertrochanteric line, or the intertrochanteric crest. Along the shaft of the bone, in the posterior view, that line along that part is known as the linea aspera, somewhere down the middle of the shaft. Proceeding to the distal part of your femur, this time we look at it a posteriorly. You know that this is medial. Therefore, this is the medial condyle, and this is the lateral condyle. There is a bump a little above the medial condyle, hence medial epicondyle. The lateral condyle, above, a little above that projection, is known as the lateral epicondyle. This right here is known as the intercondyloid fossa, and anteriorly, this is the patellar surface. The kneecap or the patella would normally be found here, that kind of slides along there. After the femur, we have the tibia and the fibula. Together, they are known as the crus. The larger bone is the tibia and the thinner bone is the fibula. How it articulate with your femur, kind of like this. The condyles of your femur will also meet with the condyles of your tibia. How we orient the tibia? This is the more proximal end. This is the more distal end. This is the lateral side. The fibula would normally be sitting there, something like this. Fibula is lateral. Tibia is medial. This is the anterior side. And this is the posterior side. Let's look at tibia first. This is the medial condyle, and this is the lateral condyle. Those will be the ones that will articulate with the condyles of the distal end of your femur. You see these bumps right there? You would call those the spine, or you can also call those the intercondyloid eminence. This projection is known as your medial tuberosity. If we look at it from the front, this is your medial tuberosity right here. And then this one is the lateral tuberosity. Below your lateral tuberosity, you will see this surface, which is the articular facet. And that is where the head of the fibula will articulate. This is your tibial tuberosity, which leads down the shaft to this ridge, very pointed and sharp, that is known as your tibial crest. Posteriorly, this notch right here is the popliteal notch. The most distal projection is known as the medial malleolus. Remember, fibula is here. So this is medial side. This, therefore, is the medial malleolus. Medial malleolus, posterior view. And this part is known as the dorsal projection. Fibula. This is the more lateral of the cruce bone. This is the proximal end. This is the shaft, and this is the distal end. You call this the head, the shaft. The projection here is known as your lateral malleolus. Remember that the tibia has the medial malleolus. The fibula has the lateral malleolus. Lateral malleolus, kind of find it, of course, laterally, and also a bit more caudal compared to the rest of the bumps and projections at the distal end of your fibula. So right now you look at it a posterior view. Lateral malleolus is more prominent at the posterior. The most distal part of the hind limb is known as the pes or the foot of your cat. This is the more proximal part and the phalanges will always be the most distal part. How do you know if it's left or right? You look for this bone. Technically, the first digit of the foot is very small in cats. That is kind of like the toe, the little toe. You know that that should be more medial. Therefore, you know that this is the right foot and this is the left foot. The foot of your cat has three major parts. This would be the proximal tarsals, then midway, where the sole of the foot is made of the metatarsals, 
And finally, the most distal part would be your phalanges or your digits. In the same way that there are also seven carpals, there are also seven tarsals in your cat. The largest one is known as the calcaneus. The calcaneus has a few prominences. This prominence here is the tuber calcanei, and this lateral projection here is the sustentaculum tali. But this entire bone is known as the calcaneus. This next bone that articulates mainly with the tibia is known as the talus or the astragalus. And then below the talus, this bone here is known as the navicular scaphoid or central tarsal bone. Below these first three tarsals is the next row of tarsal bones. This is the cuboid, which is the fusion of the fourth and fifth tarsals. You know it's a cuboid, it is directly below the calcaneus. Next, this is the third or the lateral cuneiform. This is the second or the intermediate cuneiform. And then finally, this is the first or the medial cuneiform. You must be thinking, oh, well, isn't that already the toe or isn't that like the phalanx of, of the first digit? This is the first or the medial cuneiform. And this one is actually all that remains of the metatarsal. And it is the smallest and it is the most medial of the metatarsals. After the tarsal bones, of course, are the metatarsal bones. We've mentioned that the first one is just small and rudimentary and it articulates with the first or the medial cuneiform. But metatarsals 2, 3, 4, and 5, they're very long, very prominent, and actually make up majority of your foot. For the phalanges, they are similar to the phalanges of the manus of your cat, or the, the, the forepaw of your cat. This is the proximal phalanx, this is the middle phalanx, and this is the distal phalanx. The distal phalanx will have the kind of like a hook shaped or a beak shaped process, which is the unguicular process. In this case, it is covered by a keratinous claw. And if you are lucky, you will also find that maybe in your specimens, you'll see these bumps right here, these little bones, again, that look like sesame seeds. Those are the sesamoid bones. Yes, and we're finally done with all of the bones of the cat, not just the pelvic girdle and the hind limbs, but actually all of the bones of the skeletal system, if you indeed watch this playlist in the recommended order. I just want to say thank you all for sticking it with us all the way through the end, for following us in our journey through the cat skeletal system. And again, just thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Can't say thank you enough for putting up with all of this. And I hope that somehow this has helped. A big shout out to the references that I've used throughout the entire series, which would be, of course, Hyman. You also have the one by Deulis and Polera. You also have the one by Philip Cochran. And finally, the one by Fishbeck and Sebastiani. But yeah, you guys have fun. See you soon, guys. Bye.